This is the Proform Whirlwind Dual Action Stationary Exercise Bike. I purchased this exercise bike secondhand from a local thrift shop. And we're just going to pan across it so you can see the entire thing here. There is this control panel in the middle, which does display a little bit of information on an LCD screen. And it's got these two arm pieces. And they are linked to the pedal pieces through this linkage right here. It's called dual action because you can disconnect the arm piece from the foot piece and, and simply pedal. Or you can have it attached and exercise both your legs and your arms. There is a large flywheel in here being driven by the pedals. And there is a belt which connects to a smaller wheel. And it drives a fan. The fan pushing the air is what creates the resistance. And that's... Uh, you know, how you get your workout. It was apparent immediately that there was a problem. There was a great deal of play in the pedals. You know, the pedals are mounted on the pulley, which I'm sometimes calling the flywheel, and the f pulley itself is mounted on bearings. There was so much play in the pulley that the drive belt spontaneously came off. Now, why would the belt come off? Well, as you can see, there's an enormous amount of play here in the pedal, indicating that there's probably a bad bearing inside of there. So we're going to have to disassemble this thing in order to replace that bearing. And I know nothing about these, so I immediately started searching YouTube, hoping to find a video where somebody would explain how to disassemble this thing and repair it, but there was none. I decided to figure out how to repair it myself and make my own video for the next guy who comes along and, and has a problem with this device. There is a user's manual available for this device, and I will include a link to that in the description. I could not find any sort of a service manual, however. The user manual does include an exploded diagram and a parts list, which is helpful. Now, this video should also be useful if you have to replace the drive belt. Drive belts do break occasionally and need to be replaced. But if you are replacing the drive belt, you'll only have to remove the cover on the left side. If you're going to disassemble this thing, I think the best place to start is this innocuous little piece right here. This is called the lock rod. The purpose of this, it gives you a resting place for this connecting piece right here. If you do disconnect this piece, you then take this little hook here and you place it here just to get it out of the way. This piece will prevent this entire side cover from coming off. This is a surprisingly difficult piece to get off. And this rubber cap is held in place with a push nut. And if you know anything about push nuts, they're very difficult to get off. It's basically a flat piece of metal with spines that bend backward as you push it on. So when you try to push it off, it's almost like a fish hook. They're very hard to get off. I think this is probably the best place to start. The next thing I would remove are these fan covers, these screens here that protect you from getting your fingers into those blades. Then I would remove these crank handles, these cranks right here, and you're going to need a crank removal tool to get this off. Now these side covers are held on by five Phillips head screws. They're located here, 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 and here. And when those screws are removed, then the side covers can then just be pulled away. You can then expose what's called the bottom bracket and the bearing that is inside of it. Now we're going to start with the lock rod and these rubber caps and push nuts. There's a rubber cap and push nut on each side of the exercise bike. I'm going to start by maybe giving it just a little shot of WD-40. It's never easy getting these darn things off. I'm going to try with my uh, locking pliers here a little bit. Maybe I can loosen it up a little. If I work it back and forth. Aha! We got it out. And there is, you can see that push nut. It's a little rusty. You can see that push nut on the inside. Okay, and we just repeat the process on the other side. Okay, I've gone ahead and just taken the push nut off of the other side as well. Next, we're going to remove this fan guard. And there are these little rubber clips here. One, two. There's another one down here, and there's another one up back there. So there's four of them. 
The only way I know to get these off is to get, just pry them off with something. Get a screwdriver underneath and you only have to raise one side. Okay, there's one. And you just repeat that three more times. I've gone ahead and popped all four of them open. That one's open, that one's open. And this one here, and there's another one under here. They're all been opened up. Now there's an axis that runs through here, and there's a screw-on fastener on each side. I have to unscrew that. There's one on each side. Okay, I've gone ahead and removed both of those. Now there are two rubber slots inside of this frame that are holding on this cage. One is up here and one is down here. You need to uh, pull these apart a little bit and pull them out like so. And we expose our blades. You can see what that slot looks like. There, there's the lower one and there's the upper one. So when you put this back in, both of those guards will have to slip inside of those slots. Now we'll work on getting these crank handles off. Again, there's one on each side. There is a plastic cap on this crank handle, which is covering a 13 millimeter bolt. You can see there's two tiny little holes in it. And there is a special tool which is designed for this. You made up that tool, those holes, and then you wind that little cap off. It is threaded. However, it's also just soft plastic. You know, you can kind of just get your thumbnail under it and just pull it off like that. So you don't really need that special tool. And that exposes our 13 millimeter bolt. We're just going to go ahead and use our ratchet and get off that bolt. And off it comes. Now, in order to remove the crank handle, we need a crank removal tool, and it looks like this. And here's how it works. It has this piece here, which is threaded, and it, meets, and it corresponds to threads which are on the inside of the crank handle. This inner piece goes into the outer piece, and it will bottom out in there. This is now making contact with the inner piece of metal. Now I use this 16 millimeter wrench and I drive that thing in and it's going to, it's going to pull the crank off the shaft. Now this thing can be on there really tight and you might have to really crank down on this thing hard to get that thing to break loose. Now I already did it once before making this video, so it's sort of broken loose already. So, so it's going to come off a lot easier this time. But this is, this is how it works. You just drive this thing in, and it will pop the crank off. Like so. We'll remove it. Okay. Now that we've removed the crank handle from the left side, we'll now remove it from the right side. First, we remove the plastic cap. And then we remove the 13 millimeter bolt. Then we use the crank removal tool to remove the crank handle. And finally, we remove the tool from the crank handle. Now the crank handles have been removed from both the right and left side. Now this plastic cover is held on by five screws that are all around. We're going to go ahead and remove the first one right here with a Phillips head screwdriver. Now they may be in there really tight. And they haven't been turned in years, so you might have a hard time getting them started. You don't want to mess these screws up. You don't want to strip them because it's going to be very hard to get them out if you do. So we'll go ahead and take one out. The screw is loosened up. It just doesn't want to come all the way out. It's just in there so deep. But 
when we pull the side cover off, we'll get them all out. We're going to go ahead and take off all the rest of the screws. With all the screws removed, we're going to go ahead and remove the side cover. And with the left side cover off, we expose the flywheel and the belt. All the screws have been removed from the right side and we'll now remove the right side side cover. And we expose the main bearing. Before removing the bearings, the belt will have to come off the flywheel. So if the belt hasn't already been removed, now is the time to do it. You can just simply walk it off, move the belt to one side and then turn the wheel and it'll come off on its own. This axle and the bearings are held in place with a couple of locked nuts. These nuts are one and a quarter inch. Unfortunately, I don't have a one and a quarter inch wrench. So what I'm going to have to do is use a couple of locking pliers. So these two nuts right here are locked against each other. They're, they're tightened by screwing one against the other. They're pretty tight. The most important thing to know about these nuts is that they are reverse threaded. So in order to take these off, you have to turn them clockwise. I'm going to use one arc plier to grab the inner nut and see if I can't loosen the outer nut. Again, turning it clockwise. Okay, we've got the outer locking nut loosened up. Now we can just sort of spin it off. We'll just hold on to the arc pliers and spin the flywheel. Okay, both of those locking nuts are off. Next, we have a washer with a, this is a notched washer, or perhaps we could call it a spacer. And it's got a notch in it to fit in one of these grooves. Whether it's called a spacer or a washer, I'm not sure, but that has to be removed. Now what we have is the bearing. This is the outer race of the bearing on the right side. Again, it's one and a quarter inch. Now I'm going to put a little towel under here. I don't know what's going to fall out of here, so I'm going to put a little towel to maybe catch anything that falls out, maybe loose bearings or who knows what. This is actually kind of loose already. Take a shortcut here, we'll just spin the wheel. Finally, that came out. The bearing housing appears to be completely destroyed. These bearings are supposed to be caged, and the cage is all fractured, and individual bearings are falling out everywhere. We can now pull out the flywheel. We have more loose and bro broken bearings. Okay, here's the bearing from the other side. Bearings are falling out of the race. Now here's that axle when it's fully pulled out all encased in grease, as it should be. These are the bearings that came out of the exercise bike. This is the left side bearing. It's a ring that contains nine balls. It is intact, but the balls are just sort of falling out of it, probably because of wear. Now this is the right side bearing. It is just completely destroyed. The ring is broken into five separate pieces. And the balls are just sort of falling all over the place. Now bearings like this are available for sale. Now this bearing ring is 44 millimeters in outer diameter and 32 millimeters in inner diameter. And there are nine balls inside of the bearing race and those balls are 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. It is strange that the ring diameter would be measured in millimeters but the balls measured in fractions of an inch but apparently that's how they do it. These threads are for the right side bearing race, and most threads are just completely gone, probably because the bearing race was banging back and forth in there. And these are the left side bearing race threads, also in bad shape. 
So I'm a little concerned that even when we get new bearings, we may not be able to fix this thing, but we'll see. I've taken out the two inner bearing races and cleaned them up so I could get a better look at them. They look terrible. There is just all kinds of pitting and roughness on the race surface. So these bearing races really should be replaced. Now looking at our pulley axle combination once again. I assume that this was a proprietary part and I would probably never be able to buy another one. This uh, stationary bike is 17 years old. I thought the odds of getting something like that would be pretty much near zero. And even if I could find one, it would probably be horribly expensive. But I was surprised. I was able to get another one. I purchased this replacement pulley axle combination on Amazon. And I will put the part number in the description in case you need to buy one. And you can see all the threads are, are perfect. And this one even comes with an inner bearing race already in place. And it looks like it's really cranked down there tight. Okay, great. Now this thing cost me only $39. The fact that it was available for sale at all was amazing, but that I could get it for only $39, that was even more amazing. Another thing which kind of surprised me is I was able to buy a complete bearing set for this exercise bike. It comes with two sets of caged ball bearings, inner and outer races everything you need. Now, if your axle and bearing races are in good shape, you might just need to replace the ball bearings and, and you can buy just the ball bearings for significantly less money. But in our case, we need to go beyond just replacing the caged bearings. Getting the old outer bearing races out can be difficult. They're in there pretty tight. I'm going to see if I can't drive them out. The worst case scenario is I simply have to reuse them, and that's probably okay. They don't look like they're in bad shape, but I would like to replace them if possible. I'm going to try to drive them out with a piece of wood. Okay, there's the right side outer bearing race. That came out pretty easily. Now I'm going to drive out the left side bearing race. Now this is kind of a longer pole than I wanted. With wood, you're not going to scratch the, the metal on the inside. Okay, the left side outer bearing race is out. I'm going to put in the new outer bearing race on the left side. I'm going to start it with a rubber mallet. And then a piece of wood the rest of the way. Okay, that bearing race is now in. Outer bearing race on the right side. Right side outer bearing race is in place. Now with the new outer bearing races in place, we're going to go ahead and start greasing up those bearing races, getting ready for the bearings. We've already greased the other side. And got some grease on these bearings. We'll put on a little more maybe. Get that grease inside of that bearing cage. Pulley axle, we already have some grease on the inner bearing race. Now we put on the bearing. Now it's important to get this thing on right. It's easy to put this thing in upside down if you're not careful. Okay, the ball side, that flat metal side, that flat metal side goes in first and it goes over the inner bearing race, like so, exposing the balls to the outer bearing race. I'm going to put this axle pulley in through the left side bearing, like so. Now we're going to put the bearings on the right side. We're going to add a little more bearing grease. Get all that bearing grease up inside those cages. That's where you really need it. Okay, now we're going to put this bearing on and it goes in 
with the balls facing the outer bearing race, like so. Now a word about the right side inner bearing race. This is the original and it had a hex nut kind of built into it. And this is the new one. The new one doesn't have that hex nut. It just kind of has these two little slots on it. Okay, so we're, we will now put on the right side inner bearing race. Now two things to remember. First, it is left hand threaded. So you're gonna turn it counterclockwise to put it on. And secondly, it's very easy to cross thread this thing. One of the reasons it cross threads so easily is because it's got this slot on the axle. It should go on very easily. If it binds up at all or it sort of wobbles back and forth as you're putting it on, you're cross threaded. I know this because it happened to me the first time I tried to put this on. I did in fact cross thread it. It should just go all the way in there without binding up at all. Okay. Okay, the inner bearing race is in, and you want to tighten this to the point that there's no more, that there's no play in it, but, but that it can still turn freely. And we are at that point. Next, we put on this washer that's got that little nub on it right there. That little nub goes into this slot on the axle. You slide that down. Next goes on the locking nut. Again, it is left hand threaded. Put it on counterclockwise and be careful not to cross thread it. I'm going to tighten up that lock nut with these arc pliers or channel locks, whatever you want to call them. By the way, this nut is one and a quarter inch. If you happen to have a one and a quarter inch wrench available, that would certainly be easier. Okay, I don't think that's going anywhere. Okay, that should be locked into place. And there's there's no side-to-side -side play at all. Now, if this thing does start developing play in it, as you're using it, it's possible that this locking nut may have come loose and it's unwinding itself. Okay, the right side inner bearing is in and it is locked into place with the lock nut. Now we're on the other side of the bike, looking at the pulley flywheel much better than it was before, much tighter. And we want to put our belt back on. We have to look at the fan first. Now this is where the pulley goes on the other side. It wraps around over the fan like so. And right in here we have a tensioner, or an idler, whatever you want to call it. This has got a spring. A spring is providing tension to this idler, and it's not adjustable. The way we adjust tension is with these little adjusters right here. You put one of them around this axle, and then you've got this other end that's slotted and it fits right in here. And there's a nut on here. And this is how you adjust the tension on, on the belt. This, this screw will move the entire fan forward and that will put tension on the belt. And we have one on the other side as well. You want to adjust these all the way out so that this fan goes all the way in as far as it'll go. That'll give you minimum tension. And once you put the belt back on, then you can tighten them up. Now I have the belt in place on the fan axle and the tensioner. Now I just take this belt and I put it on the uh, pulley and then you can just walk it on. You just sort of let it walk itself on. Now we're back on. Now, how much tightness do we want on this belt? Well, according to the user manual, you want between a quarter of an inch and three quarters of an inch of play. Now here we are back at the fan side. And here's our belt now in place. It runs around the axle and then up over this tensioner and then back to the pulley flywheel. And this is how we adjust the tension with these nuts right here. Just one other thing to note, if you are working on the bike because you need to replace the belt, you will need to pull the fan wheel all the way out, get this axle out of here, and then you can slide the belt in. Since we don't need to actually replace the belt, we can leave this front axle in place. We just need to adjust it back and forth to get the right tension. 
we're going to take a ruler and we're just going to measure how much play we have. So we're going to tighten these nuts on both sides with our 10 millimeter wrench. We've got it at about half an inch of play without, you know, really pressing on it. I'm guessing about half an inch. It's probably tight enough. I think that's good. I think we'll go with that. Now that the belt has been reconnected, we can now put on the side covers. With the two side covers in place, we shall now put in the four screws to hold them in place on each side. The four screws are in on the left side, and now we'll put them on the right side. With the side covers fastened down, we will now connect the crank handles starting on the left side. I'm using rubber mallet to get it started. And then we will follow it with the 13 millimeters bolt. And lastly, we put on the plastic cap. Now we will connect the right side crank handle. We will tap it in with a rubber mallet. Then the 13 millimeter bolt. And now the plastic cap. Next, we put on the fan guard. Now we have to get these guards into those little rubber slots on the top and the bottom of the frame. The right and left frame guards are connected with these little rubber connectors here. I'll use a screwdriver to kind of spread that open. We'll move up to this one here. And there's two more, then we'll just do the same thing to those. Next, we have the caps on the fan guards, one on each side. Just screw them on. And the last thing we have to do is put these uh, push nut cap combinations on the ends of the lock bar. And we'll just go ahead and show us putting it on the left side. And you can just push it on really, or maybe just give it a tap with a rubber mallet to get it all the way on. And that's it. We have replaced the bottom bracket bearings in a Proform Whirlwind exercise bike.